Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover today. There was a tremendous event in Oceania yesterday. We've got more from the Parker Probe, a Nova Remnant, and a special message at the end. We've got no sunspots, but we do have coronal holes, and the southern system spent the last day approaching central Earth-facing heliographic longitude. With patchy coronal holes ahead, the solar wind should be variable middle to the end of the week, but right now the solar wind is relatively calm. We're entirely within normal quiet range, but at the New Day UTC last night, we saw the phi angle reverse quickly, which was the cause of the brief intensification of geomagnetic conditions, even if it was still minor itself. Let's go down to the White Island volcano off the coast of New Zealand. It was not a tremendous eruption, but about 50 tourists were on the island. Helicopter rescue failed as conditions around the island deteriorated, and five have died in the volcanic outburst. Island still off limits hours later. So folks, the tiniest little filament snap about a year ago produced the faintest of CMEs going out right that you can barely even see here on Soho, which is designed to see them. Very faint. But Parker was on its way to its first pass and pointed its whisper camera at the western limb. Left side, especially here, you can see the brightness enhancement compared to Soho. Not bad for an impromptu shot out the window, so to speak, for Parker. Sticking with the Parker probe one more time, the folds in the solar wind. The magnetic reversals that will appear to occur apart from the interplanetary magnetic fields are shown here in the simple diagrams elucidating what the Parker probe went through on several of these fold interactions as it passed close by to the sun. Remember, its next close pass is coming up in January, so more science is on the way. Folks, this is NGC 3132 also known as the Eight Burst Nebula. They decided this was one of the best candidates for Muse, and they were right. The spectral analysis has revealed much more about the Nova Remnant's elemental composition, and you can see the atom abbreviations and ionization character top left of each image. Don't mind admitting, the oxygen panel top middle is probably my favorite. Quick note, the Twitter ban for the observers is ongoing for six more days. It stinks, but it's just six days, and... It's just Twitter. This does mean, however, that the earthquake forecasting snapshots won't appear there this week. Those are in the app only, but you can still use the real-time forecasting tools at quakewatch.net. Time to try it yourself, I guess. Lastly here before the announcement, folks, I've been seeing these studies for years. There's a secret advising group that charges hundreds of thousands for things like planetary geometry stock forecasting. But the space weather effect is even more well studied. It's the effect on investor mood and the system failure effect due to solar storms adding volatility to the indices. These have now been confirmed for the fourth time in the last five years. Yes, I have seen all the different proposed connections. No, I am not interested in helping game a stock market or make rich people richer. But basically, with mid-range KP, everything will go per the normal inputs, but when solar storms peak, we do get a tremor in the faith of Wall Street. Now folks, here's a little note about one of the topics coming up at our conference next year. Hope you enjoy. Seven billion people. Kind of amazing, isn't it? Especially when you consider what happened to this planet 12,000 years ago, and 12,000 years before that. We have come a long way since the Gothenburg magnetic excursion, and most people have no idea that the next one in a catastrophic regular cycle of our planet and solar system is already underway. The notion that the sun can halt our planet in its tracks, lighting up the heavens with scenes that inspired ancient and seemingly unexplainable stories of the most awesomely terrible sky do remain elusive to most. The magnetic reversal Ice Age, extinction events, and cosmic ray bombardments are evident in the rock. The sun, playing the role of the destroyer, is told in both rock and voice, and it is likely the only explanation for all the evidence of the catastrophe. From pole to pole, and from mountaintop to the bottom of the sea, the evidence tells only one story. Observing the Frontier 2020 will cover the usual topics of space weather, climate change, cosmology, and earthquakes, but also contains something that may never be repeated, something that has never been seen before. Doug Vogt of the Diehold Foundation, Catastrophism Leader Randall Carlson, Robert Felix of Ice Age Now, Dr. August Dunning, Caltech and formerly of NASA, Adrian D'Amico and Gary Long from Suspect Sky, and myself all coming 
speaking on catastrophe with topics like the Nova, the magnetic reversal, extinction events, earth effects, the survival of humans, and the appearance of new species, all requiring coverage and discussion. Community involvement and opportunities to interact with the speakers are heavily scheduled that Friday through Sunday, August 7th through 9, 2020. There's never been more than 350 people at an Observing the Frontier event. 500 are already registered and we're eight months away. I'll have two cosmology experts flanking me and Stephen Crothers and Arabic Sargsian, and we'll have all the community events you've come to love about the conference. More information on the other speakers is coming in the next few weeks. There are less than 75 tickets remaining. I can't wait to shake your hand in the northern reach of the new Valley of the Sun. Go to observatoryproject.com for details and to register. Be safe, everyone.